Okay, let's try this. Can you hear me now? <laughs> Talking to a camera and it's like one of those weird movies where the lips are moving, but you don't understand. So I'll give that a second to catch up. Let me know if you can hear me now. All right, that should be better. So I'll give the delay a second to catch up as I watch the comments. Should be able to hear me now. Now you can, yay, good. All right, yeah, it helps if you take the mute off of your microphone. <laughs> Who knew, right? All right, great. Uh, some of you, it still says no sound. Should be coming through soon. Should be coming in. Okay, yes, yes, I'm seeing yeses to sound, so that's good. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for popping into my live. I tried to give a heads up this time. Hey, Kathy Zilski, thanks for stopping in. I'm still still working out my kinks. And did you know if you hit mute, your microphone won't work? <laughs> Volume up. Okay, let me check that one. See if I can get that to come up. Plus, I sometimes talk kind of quiet and low. So we will see how this goes. So good morning, everyone. I'm glad you're popping in. I'm actually going to make a card today. I think I might finish one. We'll see how it goes. I had a lot of people ask about shopping my stash. They didn't want to see me use any brand new product. They wanted me to shop my stash. And that is exactly what I did. And when I started shopping my stash to figure out what I wanted to make today, I ended up pulling out all of my bins for this particular company and just reorganizing everything. So see what happens when you guys ask me to shop my stash. I have to organize. <laughs> so good. Oh, good afternoon from Madrid. That's really cool. And Arizona. That's really fun. You can hear me. Sounds great. All right. Oshkosh. Ooh, that's getting pretty close. Hi, Karen. Okay, so uh, the products I'm going to be using today are from Tailored Expressions. I have not used any of Tailored's products in a live yet, so I thought that'd be a nice change up. It also gave me a chance to shop my stash, which is growing and growing. And like I said, of course, I had to go and organize my stuff because, you know, you see something you like and you're like, oh my gosh, I don't think I have it. And you find out you really do. Well, that was me last night. So I created a little duplicates pile last night when I was organizing. So, okay, Michigan, great to see you all. Thank you all for popping in. I did put up the, uh, the live announcement yesterday on my YouTube channel. So hopefully you guys all caught that and you could click that notify me button because then YouTube can, you know, pop a message up and says, hey, she's live in case you forgot. Um, and I also sent out a newsletter. So I just quickly put in my video description the products that I'm pretty sure I'm going to be using today. I may bring in some other ones um, as I go along with the, the card project because I have a vague idea of what I'm going to do. So I might have to go back in and update my supply list. All right, wonderful, California. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and jump down to my tabletop and show you what I'm going to be working with today. Now these I think I have figured out. And I'm upside down. Hold on, that's an Ecamm thing. It has never really done that to me before. So one second as I flip this. Nope, hold on. You know, everything was working perfectly fine. I don't know why it decided to do this to me. So, rotate, there I am. Okay, oh, tricky gadgets, tricky gadgets. Everything was working fine. All right, so some of the products that I have picked out today, I'm going to start with the main um, main project and sentiment. So I went through and I found the Fitting Leaf Floral set. Now this particular set, there's quite a few that you can pick them up together or individually. So this is a beautiful floral arrangement. They are red rubber stamps. There's two of them on here. There's, I'm going to be playing with this design because I, I just really liked those kind of like lilies that's in there. So there is the stamp set. 
there is also a small layering stencil. So the layering stencil is, I'll show you the labels on them when I get to doing that, but there's a stencil for each of those arches. Then we have the coordinating die, which I always have to have my coordinating dies. I love those. And they also have these foilet panels. Now I will not be using these today, but I did want to share them with you in case you are into foiling. These use, um, it's, it's toner printed. So these are the type of panels you want to use with either your mini mink machine or your fuse. If you have a Gina K designs fuse. So these are some really gorgeous designs that they included in these and you get quite a few of them. And I, I really like that dot, that arrangement. Uh, this is another one. It has kind of an arch feel to it with that maybe trellis in the background. Some panels there. And this is another, now mine's going to be kind of similar. One of the cards I'm going to create is going to be similar to this, I think. I really love this. So what happens if you were to foil this with your toner foil, everything in black would be whatever color of foil you chose. And I probably would choose gold because I love shiny gold, but anything in black would be foiled. <clears throat> and then... Uh, there is this design. So this is another one. Gosh, these can really go any direction, to be honest. You can have the top, the side. So you get quite a bit in here. On the back of the packaging, it also shows you, you get three of each design and it's four, what is that? Four point, four, no, <laughs> four, five, uh, oh my gosh. You would think my brain would be awake right now. So you're getting three of each of the four designs. There we go. And the card panels are four by five and a quarter. Wow. I think I'm better off doing early morning lives, I tell ya. I can't read. So I won't be using them today, but they are an option. I did link them down below in the video description if you wanted to check any of those out. But I am going to be using the die, the stencil, and that stamp set. And I'm going to tuck that back in because I don't want dog hair getting in there. So that is that set. I'll just set that off on the side for now. And then the sentiment that I'm going to use is coming off of this Hello Lovely stamp set. So again, these are red rubber stamps. And they're just a great all occasion, kind of hitting a lot of occasions type of stamp set. You have forever grateful, thinking of you, wishing you a wonderful day, best wishes, hello lovely, you make the world a better place, and then you have these small happy birthday and hey there. And I thought the script for these would work really well with that kind of whimsical design. Again, red rubber, and these are these are a good size, guys. <laughs> like these, this is a pretty decent size sentiment. So I'm gonna use that. <clears throat> you made it. Hi, Emily. And then there's also a coordinating die. And like I said, I, I very, sorry, I had to, I got my nose in there. I had to pop my seat up a little bit. I very rarely will pick up a sentiment set unless there's a coordinating die because I like having the option to die cut out my sentiment to pop it up on the front of my card. So I will almost always pick up the coordinating die. And that is linked down below as well. So um, I, it was really hard actually to pick out a sentiment because I have a lot of her sentiment sets. So I really had to dig through. And like I said, this is really me shopping my stash. And I had a little pile going on behind me for a while till I could narrow it down. How do you line up the red rubber sentiments straight without the dyes? Um, I will try and remember to show a trick if I can, if I can remember the trick. So, um, I'll talk, I'll try and talk about that a little later. So those are the main elements I'm going to use today. There are a few other things that I think, um, I may possibly use depending which direction I go, but these are the main components. So I'm going to start in by creating my card. 
I'll just tuck this off on the side. How are you guys all doing today? I've seen some people talking about the Spellbinders Weekender, I think. They got their kits. I got mine too. Isn't it fantastic? It is super fantastic. Hi, Donna. Sunny Arizona from Nancy. Your first time watching. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. <clears throat> Let me just grab my Misty. One second. I have things piled in a drawer, piled in a drawer. All right. So I, sorry about that. My color is a little off here. Ecamm reset. So my settings changed on me before I realized it. So this looks a little funky, but this is the teal Misty from Tailored Expressions. I'm just going to remove that for right now because we don't need the uh, foam pad in our Misty for this. I think I'm going to change this out just because it's a little dirty. Look, look at that. that <laughs> this is my scratch paper from uh, Virtual Stamp Joy. <clears throat> I'm going to grab a new one. I don't think I have these linked, but I love these. These are Misty grid papers uh, that Tailored Expression sells, and I love them. I'm just going to tuck that in there. All right, so I'm going to start with my image, and I'm going to use this pretty one up here. They're both pretty, but this one that's got looks like lilies on it. Now, I'm going to stamp two of them. So I'm going to do kind of a normal trick that I like to do, which is stamping in a light gray ink first. So I'm going to place this kind of down here at the bottom. I have my sugar cube cardstock tucked down here. I'm going to hold that in with my magnet. And I want to place this as down as kind of as far as I can, but leaving a little bit of room for my coordinating die because I want to be able to flip my cardstock and stamp it again. Now, another thing too is I plan on ink blending this and a lot of times, probably like 99.9% .9 of the time, when I'm gonna ink blend over a stamped image, I will start with a light color of ink first. So let me grab that. Hello from Wichita, Kansas, windy Wichita, Kansas. It was really windy here too the other day. So I'm gonna try some sea salt. I I haven't used sea salt yet, I don't think, from Taylor, so or I can't remember what it's like. So we're gonna see what this does. I want it to be a light gray. So let's let's see if that does it. So again, because these are already foam mounted stamps, I needed to remove that foam insert out of the misty. Inking that up, stamp that down. Let's see what we get. Um, well, I'm feeling some bumps around here, so I'm not getting a very good impression. Let me try that again. I think I'm getting, I might have to go with a, I think I'm going to go with a darker color ink. Let me grab that one second. Um, what do I want? Oh, let's do oyster. It's going to get covered up anyway. Let's try some oyster. I think sea salt was just too light for me. This is going to be pretty dark compared to that, but I'm going to stamp over it anyway. So we'll stamp this down. There we go. So I know it looks a little weird, looks a little dark. We'll be okay. I'm going to flip my cardstock, tuck that down, and stamp this again. Now, when I'm done stamping, I'm going to leave my stamp in here because once I'm done ink blending, I want to come back and stamp over the image with a black ink. One of the reasons I'm not starting with that black ink right away uh, is because I don't want to wait for the black ink to dry and I didn't wet any of my stamp chamois. One second. Let's see if I have something that's damp. Not really. Okay, I'll have to wait. So that'll wait to get cleaned in a little bit. So there I have a stamped panel, which this alone is beautiful. You don't even need a coordinating die for this, but I do love to pop up my images. So 
I will pull that out and now we can grab our stencil so I can show you how cool the stencil is. <clears throat> All right, so now to do the ink blending down in the bottom corner of each of these stencils, let's see if I can get this in for you guys. So see, it's got the item number here and then this is 1A. Bring in the next one. It's going to say 2A. So this is going to be all for one particular wreath. You just have to figure out which one it is. And this one's 3A. Now this one, the other set, is going to say, oh, that's 4A. I need four. <laughs> I need all those. This one is a 1B. So now we start in the Bs. Pretty sure I'm using A. And the reason I know that is, well, I was kind of playing with it, but also the shape of the flower. So I know that this is going to fit my shape. Where's that? That's, what is that? That's four. I'm going to put these back in order. That is two. That is three. How do you wet your stamp chamois? I have one, but I haven't really figured out how to use it. Uh, you just wet them in the sink. Just put it under your faucet, get it wet, and then you, you wring it out is all you really do. You don't want to wring it out a ton because if you go to clean your stamp set and you wrung out the water too much, then it's it's almost not wet enough, but you don't want it dripping. So I'll probably go in and wet one of mine here after I'm done stamping. Um, or you can, you know, just get it wet and then, you know, if you want to use stamp cleaner, it's nice too sometimes. All right, now I'm going to some ink blending so I'm going to take some repositionable tape and I'm going to place this down on my work surface that's just going to stick it down I kind of have given <laughs> kind of given up on all of the sticky mats and magnetic things I just like working right on my work surface so I always have a lot of repositionable tape handy now I'm going to take stencil 1a and i'm going to line this up let me see if i can zoom in for you guys just a little bit here and i just got to remember to zoom out <laughs> here we go so i'm going to line that stencil up with my stamped lines of course i didn't get any tape ready <clears throat> now the surface i'm working on is magnetic so you could, if you have a magnetic surface, you can use your magnets to hold that down. I trust tape. So that's what I'm going to use today. This is just post-it tape. I've used washi tape. I actually have some hanging here, some really cute washi tape from Lawn Fawn that I use too. But for now, I'm just going to use this post-it tape to hold that down. Yeah, I have piles of post-it tape. I like mass bought it from Amazon one time. So I have just tons of rolls of mass of post-it tape. <laughs> uh, you were spraying it with water, mister, to keep it on your desk and it didn't seem to really do anything. I will spray mine with a water mister if, if it's still kind of wet, but not really. Like I have a few of them here. I have the tidy towel. I have one that I've gotten from the automotive department and I have a stamp jammy. Um, and I keep them all in this little tub and see like my lawn fawn one. It's, I mean, it's got a little wet spot here, but not much. Otherwise it's stuck together. So I would not try re, re wetting this. I would take these over to the sink. So yeah, look at my, <laughs> I have a handful of them that I just keep in here. And then when I get one wet, I just get them all wet and I stick them in here. I used to put them, in a container um but it just it i don't know i don't know if there wasn't enough ventilation but it just kind of got stinky so i just used those lunch containers all right now for this one i am going to start with some pinks and i'll show you my other examples uh later on at the end i did kind of a fairly light touch to these for my examples, but I'm going to come in with more of a punch. So I am bringing in dragon fruit. These are all colors from tailored expressions and I'm going to be using these detail blending brushes. So I just keep them all in this little container 
that they actually come in. This one looks like it's pretty, pretty pink. So I'll use this one. So I'm just using these small brushes. I don't need anything really huge. I'm going to tap off because dragon fruit's pretty intense. And I can always come back and pick up that ink. But I'm going to start over here and just start blending on some of that color. I'm going pretty light-handed. I'm not putting, when we say light-handed, that means we're not pushing down on our brush very hard. Because I want to keep the outer edges a little light. Then I'm going to come back in and punch that up a little bit on the edge. So that'll help give it that two-tone look. And I don't even have to press hard here because dragon fruit is just super powerful. Get in these little detail flowers here, which, you know, I mean, I'm using a detail brush, so I could actually have done those small flowers in a different color, but I'm going to keep it pretty simple and just do them all the same. So we'll get this one down in the corner. Punch that up a little bit. There. Where'd my paper towel go? Sorry, that was probably loud on the microphone. I forget how much it picks up off of my desk. I just don't go live enough to sit and fiddle with all the settings. That's a good idea, Lori. That's a really good idea. Okay, so that was dragon fruit. And then I can remove my post-it tape. Oh, so pretty. Ooh, actually, I'm going to flip this. I forgot I had the other one. I'm going to flip this. Sorry, my hand's getting in the way. If you see flashes of sparkle, that's my grays popping out. So I'm going to do this one the same way. Get my dragon fruit back out. My, your nails. <clears throat> oh, my nails match the dragon fruit. <laughs> I didn't even think of that. My poor nails need to be redone. But it ain't happening today. So I'm coming over here to do this. Then I can have two of them done at one time. So up to that center. And then down to this one. Now this card's going to have some pretty bright colors on it, but I'll show you a lighter version if you're not really into the in-your-face type of colors. Aloha, Judith. How fun. I want to be in Hawaii right now. That's dragon fruit. Now I can move this one. And... Oh, that's so pretty, isn't it? I love that. Love it, love it, love it. Now I need... Oop, that's 1B. I don't want 1B. I want 2A. So I can place this over the top. This one is going to give me some additional flowers and also the center of the flowers. So I'm taping that down once again. And this one I'm going to do with Dijon, which is really weird. I never, never would have thought I would have been a Dijon girl. I don't know. I, I usually am more of, you know, kind of lighter yellow colors, but, and this probably could almost go for fall. So maybe I should do some lighter colors, but I just really loved this color combination. So again, I'm going to pick that up with my blending brush, kind of tap off a little bit and I'm keeping I'm going to keep the darkest or the heaviest hand of color on the right hand side of this floral bunch. So get heavy handed right on the edge. Let the rest of that ink kind of fade off a little bit there. Yes, they do have really fun ink names. They really do. Speaking of that. They just released, Tailored Expressions just released some new colors. They have it in um, <clears throat> cardstock, envelopes, ink pads, 
Mine will be here today. I'm so excited. Mine is coming. I ordered immediately. I cannot refrain. They have a full set syndrome bundle. And I feel like that just, it's like they knew. They just know. So yes, I did buy the full set. <laughs> but I appreciate it because then the full set also has re-inkers. And I am very thankful for that. Because I know I'm not going to need re-inkers right away. But boy, when you go to grab something and afterwards you wish you had the re-inker, then you have to wait till it comes. This, I just have it all right away. I'm very much a convenience person. So I flipped my stencil and I'm doing, kind of doing this upside down. There. <clears throat> what is the black piece your ink pad is sitting on? That, it's literally just called an ink pad mat, I think. Um, it, I seen Tim Holtz use it one time. Uh, Simon Says Stamp sells it on their website. And it's pretty much shelf liner cut into squares is really all it is. Um, but it's it's just so handy. I think you get like a, a set of four in a pack. And since I lose stuff so much between my desk and my drawers, they're just kind of scattered all over the place. So it's just easier. It's small. It holds my ink pad and... I don't know. They just come in really helpful. Come in really handy, I mean. So, oof, isn't that, oh my gosh, Dragon Fruit and Dijon. Gorgeous, guys, gorgeous. So now I'm bringing in 3A. And this one, what did I decide I was going to do on this? I think I was going to go with some purples. So, all right. Now, when I was playing around with this color combination, I started with, oh, goodness, is it macaron, macaron, macaron? I don't know. I started with this. It's a lighter shade. Um, but I ended up going to dried fig. So I think I'm just going to go straight to the darker color, the dried fig. And I'm going to try and control the color with the pressure. Did your blending brushes come in that box? They did. Uh, not all of them. I can't remember. Um, I can't remember how many you get. You get quite a few in a set. And there's like a little insert in there that they all sit pretty in. It has this magnetic clasp on it. And what I did is because I loved the box so much that I took, obviously I ordered quite a few sets. Um, but I took all of my brushes out and I just put them all in this box. So it's nice. I can stack things on top of it kind of thing. And I like it. It works for me. You got yours at the Dollar Tree four for a buck twenty five. You got what did you get at the Dollar Tree, Linda? I missed that. Sorry. So this is going to be quite the purple. So I'm going to be a little careful. Well, not so much on these smaller ones. And it also has some center points. Six in a set. Thank you, Mary. I'm addicted to all things blending brushes. So, all right, now for my flower. So I'm gonna try and be really light-handed. I start off of the stencil and blend onto the cardstock. So I want, see, I can already tell it's getting pretty dark right away. So I just want to gently hit that up. Same thing down here. I'm just gonna gently get into that. Now I can come in and really amp up that edge. There we go. That works. So then I could just stick to the one ink pad. So that's all for those flowers. It is so noisy outside. You'd think people like should be at work or something, but they're all driving past my house. There's somebody on a motorcycle again, and they just hammer it down this road. Like, you guys are lucky. I don't have a little baby anymore to worry about taking naps, because I would be so mad. All right. Get in these little flowers. All 
here in California, all the Dollar Tree stores have or are closing. Oh, interesting. We have one. We have a few. We have a couple. I can't remember if they're Dollar Tree or Dollar something. Um, I actually don't go there very often. The only time I go there uh, is my son likes to go there. And so we'll pick up like some random toys or once in a while I go and get props for my pictures when I take pictures of my cards or little decorations to put up on my around the house in the bathroom around my stove. But otherwise I don't really go there very often. Ooh, that one's really pretty. So that is our third layer of the stencil. Wow, wow, wow. Very, very intense. And I just have well, my paper towel is almost gone, but I just kind of rub off any excess onto my paper towel. And my last color is going to be the leaves. And that one is going to be this sweet basil. So let's find a brush for that one. Suppose I need a stencil, don't I? I line that up. And yeah, I get pretty focused. Oops, there's my head again. I want to make sure those all lined up really good. Oh, I love these stencils that color in an image. I mean, I do like to use my markers, but boy, you can really have fun with a coloring stencil, a layering stencil. And I am also very much one where I just buy a bunch of stuff and I think I'm going to use it and then I don't. So this was a good chance for me to go through and figure out what do I really want to play with. Speaking of babies, your first grandbaby was born yesterday. Congratulations. Oh, babies are so wonderful. My nieces have a couple babies. One's um, pregnant again, but uh, my two nieces, two of the nieces, I should say, have babies. And oh my gosh, man, holidays have never been so fun. I just love up on those babies. They are absolutely hilarious. So this is the second part here. Dalton really had a good time too, but we got to be careful with Dalton because he's, he's kind of a big brute. <laughs> but Dalton enjoys playing with the babies. So it's really fun. Okay, there is, I think that's all of my ink blending. For now, anyway. There we go. Oh, so pretty. So I don't know if you could see, but I did mess on some of my lines. They didn't line up perfectly. That's okay. Not going to worry about it. Don't think the recipient is really going to care. So let me clean up my station here. <clears throat> I'm going to... Pick this up, just kind of twist and turn it, and then I'm going to rub off that repositionable adhesive. <clears throat> Excuse me. And on the back of my card. And I'm going to also clean up my workspace so I don't risk getting anything. What do I do without my sprays? I had to move all my sprays. I'll wipe this up. And this is just rubbing alcohol that I have in a spray bottle. And I think I picked this up from like the travel section at Walmart because I need a, I need a big spray bottle. I, I use a lot of stencils. I make a mess a lot. So I had to get a big spray bottle. And I'm also going to clean my stencil right away too. My crazy colorful towel. These are just some flower sack towels that I picked up. So I always put my stencil on it and then I can clean it. I spray it and I clean it. And I always use a towel to kind of catch any excess. I, I don't know. I just like it like this. Everyone does it different. 
And some people don't even clean, which is fine too. But I'm a cleaner. And I have to do it before I can move on. And all these are so small that I clean so quick and easy. So wipe that off. If you ever find you have a stencil that maybe you let sit for a while and you are having a tough time getting the color off, grab like an actual stamp cleaning spray. Like Hero Arts has one, Gina has one, Taylor has one. And you can use those cleaning sprays to spray on your stencil and it'll really, it'll really take it off. <clears throat> I'm just gonna zoom back out there. Yeah, I never, never used to use flower sack towels that much. I don't know, I don't know what I was using before, but. All right, there's that. So let's go ahead and, oh, I got a stamp. I almost forgot my own step. I'm gonna bring my Misty back out and I'm gonna pop this down in that corner. I started in the corner, so everything should match back up. And now I'm gonna come in with the black ink. So this is just Oreo ink. <clears throat> Dawn Power Wash, yes, good point, Mary. That one does really good too, Dawn Power Wash cleans stencils off really well. Stamp this down. I know this makes some people very nervous. <laughs> and I have messed up in times and have had to re-stencil things, but oh, <gasps> it's like happy fingers. Look at that. Oh my gosh. I just love it. So I can turn my cardstock. Make sure it's tucked into that corner. And ink this up one more time. And stamp down. Oh, yes. Okay, I am super, super happy with that. So now I need to clean this, but I need to go get something wet. So let me go wet this really quick. One second. Okay, so my hands are actually still wet. I still had dishwater sitting over there, so now I can just wipe this down and I can put it away. <clears throat> I actually, I think I picked my flower sack towels up from Walmart. I like when I can combine my uh, crafting shopping, <laughs> crafty shopping with grocery shopping. Actually, I haven't seen an Amazon truck in a while. I haven't done any shopping lately. I've been trying to be a little, little careful. <clears throat> so I'm not going to bother putting my foam mat back in because I'm going to need that uh, for my sentiment. So I'm going to wait on that. I did the same <laughs> technique on your car during the celebrations delivered. I do. I do it a lot. It's just one I will, I will consistently do it. <laughs> I love it. All right, now I'm going to use the coordinating die to die cut this out. So which one is that? Is it this one? Nope. It's the other one. Yeah, I do this so much when I use a lighter color ink. I don't know. It was just, um, I think, you know, I actually, I think I learned it from, um, he uh, not Heather, uh, Leah at Pink Fresh. And it, I mean, it can be a little nerve wracking because, you know, if you don't line it back up exactly where it's supposed to be, it, it could be off. But, well, I take that chance. So I'm going to hold this down with my post it tape and I'm just going to turn around and die cut this out.
here's my first one. So pretty. And I'm going to do my second one. <laughs> yeah, I bet they wondered if I still live here because I haven't had any packages delivered yet. I haven't done a lot of Amazon. And here's my second one. Now, a lot of times also what I do, and I don't show it a ton on camera, but I'm going to do it today because I know I'm going to want to, uh, is I'm going to grab another piece of cardstock and I'm going to die cut this out again. So I'm going to have two more pieces. That is piece one. And piece two. What I do is I layer these behind my panels. <clears throat> so I can set that off on the side. I'm going to put this away because I'm done with it. Hi, Yvonne. No worries. <laughs> your, <laughs> Heidi, your husband is the Amazon Prime King. You're almost on a first name basis with the driver. I don't think we ever get the same driver, unfortunately. Maybe that's fortunate. I don't know. Um, it's With the drivers here, it seems to always be different. The only one that seems to be consistent is my um, mailman. Oops. I'm going to glue these together. Now, the reason that I do this, and this is part of something I've worked into my process. Again, I'd say probably about 80% of the time I will do this. And I picked this up from Jennifer and Yana. I know Yana layers her die cuts, uh, and so does Jennifer. And I have learned to do this with my stamped images. One of the reasons that I do it is I have a lot of ink on here. So I can feel it. I can feel it's still wet. And so it's not, and it's also not a super, super thick cardstock. This was the Sugar Cube cardstock from Tailored Expressions. It's a great cardstock. But if I want to pop it up, I want to make sure that if I don't fill it completely with foam tape, that it's still going to be, you know, pretty solid. And so by adding this extra piece of cardstock in here is going to make it solid for me. If that made sense. <clears throat> I'm going to grab some liquid glue and add some to the back here. Whoops. I can pop this on because I do plan on popping these up. I also could have just die cut more pieces and layered it together instead of using foam squares later, but uh, I usually do just one. And this is, <laughs> this is the, I think it's called an embossing mat from Tailored Expressions. It's just a silicone mat. I use a variety of silicone mats to do my gluing. Um, I've used... You, know, you can get a silicone mat in the baking section. I've used the Tim Holtz uh, media grip mat and I do it because for one, my cardstock's not sliding all over the place. And two, it's catching all the excess glue. If I happen to miss when I'm gluing, I don't like cleaning glue off of my glass work surface. And it's a lot easier to rub it off of the silicone mat or a media grip mat. Don't think I linked this down below though. I'll have to add that later. So I always, I, I've been doing this for a long time, mainly because I'm really, I don't know, picky. I don't like glue on my work surface. 
Oh no, your glue bottle swallowed the pen. <laughs> oh no. And those are those two pieces. Sorry, hope that wasn't bad on the microphone. Okay, now I can just clean this up. See, fanatic cleaner, guys, sorry. Get that out of my way. Uh, I think I'm going to go ahead, well, no, I was going to say stamp my sentiment, but I need to figure out the design for this first because I had two ideas in mind. I have some pieces, I thought I had some pieces already die cut. So I want you guys to pick because then I'll create the other one off screen. So here... Um, I already have a circle cut out from the circle stacklets, and I have an arch cut out from the arch. Are these called stacklets? Yes, arch stacklets. Let me grab some cardstock. And here's here's what my ideas were looking like. And I need to. I'll show you my other ones too now because I'll need to pull both of them in. This one. So I have an arch here. And I'll probably do white on white because I really do like white on white. Um, and then I have this circle here. So I'm going to center that. Now what I can do, so this is the arches. I can kind of, I just, I should have probably done a rectangle, but the arches are going to work. We can do an arch with just that. And again, we could have this go to the side too. That'd be beautiful. These would make really pretty wedding cards if you know the um, color of the wedding. This one I'm going to put down at the bottom. So you really don't even see the arch. You could just use a rectangle die. And I'm kind of covering up those corners. But it's going to give me kind of that base to put these on. So there is that one. And then these are... The other ones I had created, they're very soft in color. I did more of a springy color combination on here. And this is one where I had stamped in black first, and then I'm just not patient enough to wait for things to dry completely. So that's where my pink doesn't quite look pink, and I opted to do the lighter color here first. So this one, we have the circle. Now, I do plan on making both. I'm going to finish one on camera and I'll do the other one uh, once my live is done and I will post pictures of both cards but which one should I finish on screen do should I do a circle or do you want me to do the rectangle because that's gonna that's gonna decide on my sentiment so you guys let me know should we do circle or rectangle <clears throat> several spare bottles I was just reading your guys' comments on the, on the on the bottle mishap. It was kind of funny. You got your bottle, you got your bottles off of Amazon or the stoppers? I need a stopper. I need a pin to put in the top of mine. So what do you guys think? Should I do the rectangle or the circle? Circle, circle, rectangle. You guys. Okay, I'll wait for more to chime in. Oop, oop, hold on, hold on. The comments are flying. The comments are flying. I mean, I'll I'll use this, I'll use this to color scheme to finish it off. I just need to know which like shape should I do. We have circle, rectangle, rectangle, circle, circle, circle. Looks like circle maybe winning. Circle or rectangle. I think circle's winning so far. So what are we thinking? Circle? One more rectangle popped in. All right, circle. Looks like you guys are looking for circle. So I will uh, finish that off screen. So that means my art or my rectangle or my arch, however you want to look at it, then that means it's going to have, because I need two for this one. So that means the rectangle is going to have the lighter colors. So that's my circle is going to have the dark colors I just did. 
So that is going to be like that. Okay. And again, I'm keeping them very light and airy, just using white for my backgrounds. I'm not going to dig out too many more supplies. I think this is enough. And the reason I said that's going to determine the sentiment is I'll show you what I had in mind. So because of how these are laid out, what I want to do is this one, because it's a longer design, I would probably put, oh, this is a pretty one. You make the world a better place. So because this one is more, what's the word, um, vertical, I would use probably that sentiment there to go with the vertical theme. And then for my circle, what did I pick out? I had something picked out. Thinking of you. I had thinking of you, I think, picked out. It might seem a little big, though. Um, I think I put all my other ones away. I think I put the rest of the sentiments away. Uh, I did. I had some other sentiments out, but I think I put them away. I may have to stamp that and see how I feel about it. I might feel like it's a little too big in comparison. Hello Lovely might be a better one. We'll stamp all of them. <laughs> I'll just stamp them all. So let's put this off on the side. Grab some white cardstock. <clears throat> and my Misty. Again, I left out that uh, foam mat because these are red rubber stamps. So I'm going to pop that in. All right, so I was debating between. Now, of course, I'm not going to worry about getting these straight uh, because I'm going to die cut them out. I think in another video, I will have to pop in and show you guys some tricks as far as lining up your sentiment straight in case you don't have. A coordinating die. I'll have to do that in another video. And then what was the other one? Hello, lovely. Uh, wishing you a wonderful day is really pretty too. So here's hello, lovely again. I'm keeping it really simple. I'm just going to stamp these in black ink. I think black is going to pop nicely. You could heat emboss these. I did have out my um, sham. I think it's champagne embossing powder from Taylor. I was playing with that a little bit the other night. It's really, really pretty. It's such, it's like a white gold, I think is what I would consider it. It's very pretty. So let's get this stamped out. You like the light color on the rectangle better than the dark one. Oh, nice. That is interesting. You finally made it, Misty. <laughs> Thanks for popping in. I appreciate that. Tried to get a little bit ahead of time, or a little bit ahead of myself this time, and actually scheduled my live. And it's so nice when it's scheduled, because then you can just click the Notify Me button, and if you happen to forget that somebody was going live on a certain day, then YouTube is going to pop up a little message and be like, hey, so-and-so is live. Because I forget all the time. <clears throat> Question about heat embossing. Could you stamp and sprinkle the powder on multiples before you heat them? Yes, absolutely. As long as you're using a really good embossing ink, like if you have Verse, oh, my thing is too juicy, uh, Versamark, Versamark, yes, a Versamark or a specific ink pad meant for heat embossing like that, yes, you should be able to do multiple panels or multiple things at one time. I kind of get paranoid and I don't usually do that. <laughs> I'm I'm really worried that things will dry uh, or start to dry, but I know Jennifer does it a lot. Um, and I think I've seen I think I've seen Taylor do that with panels where she will add the embossing powder and then heat emboss all her panels at one time. So I know it is possible. Uh, oh, I need my sentiments. So the, now I just got to match these up. Looks like that one would go there. So yeah, I'm going to run a little bit over an hour here. Hope you guys don't mind. 
I appreciate you all for sticking with me and stopping by, trying to get a little bit better about these lives. And whew, gosh, summer's coming up. Summer vacation's going to be coming up soon. So I'm going to have to figure out what I'm going to do during summer vacation. I think my plan may be to have Andy take Dalton outside in the evening. So I think in the summer I might have to do evening lives because uh, I can't do them during the day. But I think if I have Andy take Dalton outside to, to hang out for an hour in the backyard, I should be able to do a live during the summer. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Can I get that lined up? And this one. So again, I think most of these products are linked in the video description if you guys are interested in any of them. I do have a few other things I want to share with you too at the end of the video if you happen to stick around. Oh, trying to get this one lined up. I'm also trying not to completely put my head in the screen. I notice when I do that during my actual filming that my screen kind of goes crazy and doesn't want to focus for a little bit. So I'm trying not to get my head too far in there. And then, hello, lovely. Thank you, Emily. You're finishing your coffee while watching. Where do you live, Heidi? I don't remember. I actually today woke up, had coffee, took Dalton to school, and came home and take, took a nap because I did not feel good this morning. He woke up at 4 a.m. and he has not done that in a long time, but I think he was restless. So he woke up at four o'clock and when I get up early, I don't know, it just messes with me. It doesn't make me feel good. So I was out for a while this morning. So those are my three sentiments. Oh, I kind of want to be in Arizona right now. So you guys liked the circle, right? So let me just get a feel for this. Now, when I have circles like that, I like to have a sentiment kind of going horizontally across. So let's see how this is looking. This is pretty big. I almost kind of feel like it's almost too big. I mean, it fits. But just, hmm. I mean, it's pretty. I love the script. I think I hear thunder. I think I'm going to do Hello Lovely. I think that just kind of fits better as far as, um, I don't know what the word is, but, and that's the thing. I, I know what I see, but I can't always explain it, so... This one then will go over there. That will be pretty. Now, and again, like I said, I think I'm just going to leave this white on white. I don't think I'm, I mean, you can definitely stamp a background on here, uh, which I could do. I just don't want to run and get another stamp right now. Oh, you know what I could do? No, I could do it on the other card. Hmm, darn, I don't think it'll work on this one. Say, so I have some stitching. I did bring out a stitching die. We could try this. We could see how this works. I don't know how this is going to look with a circle, though. Let's maybe... Let's give this a shot. This is the diagonal stitch rectangle. So let's just see what this does. Well, I know what it does, but let's see how it looks. And... So this isn't going to cut anything out. It's just going to add stitching to the edge. Mm. Thank 
you guys for hanging in there with me. I know I'm running past my hour that people usually do their lives, so sorry about that. Oh, yes, an embossing folder. That would be pretty, too. I keep all, most of my stamp sets and everything are, if you guys haven't heard, I'm back in my kitchen. Uh, I'm not in my bedroom anymore. I'm back out crafting in the kitchen and I pretty much only brought out like ink pads and card stocks. My main supplies that I use stamps and dies, all that kind of stuff stays in my bedroom. So I'm trying to stick with what I brought out with me, which this was one of them. I might actually be crooked. Can't tell. So let's see how that, what do you guys think of that? I know pretty, pretty white on white, but what do you guys think? I, I think I'm digging it. I think I like it. Yes. Yep. Everything is tailored expressions. I'm going to grab a card base. Yes. All is tailored expressions. I haven't used her stuff in a live before and I have plenty of it. It's not for lack of product. Uh, and I had a couple comments on my YouTube channel where they said they wanted me to shop my stash. And I said, well, you know what? I can totally do that. And shopping my stash just led me to organizing my stash. So, yeah, most of this is Tailored Expressions products, which are linked down below in my, most of it's linked down below in the video description. Anything um, after the video is done that I may have used that I don't have linked, I will add it. So that, you know, why is it? I will cut card bases ahead of time. And they are never right. I swear there is not a paper trimmer out there that cuts anything the way it's supposed to. Let's see if that one works. That works. Hi, Sherry. Nice to see you. Now I can add that. Yeah tape on here. So I created an A2 size side folding card base. And whoop, wrong side. Pop this up. I don't know. I'm a side folding girl. We It was so funny at Hero Art Stamp Along. I think it was. Uh, we had this big discussion about if you're a top fold or a side fold person. And I am definitely a side fold. Yes, Yvonne, everything is always off. I've tried multiple trimmers. I mean, I have probably every trimmer you can imagine. And when I go to get my card bases, which I cut with the same trimmer, oh, I really messed that up, you guys. Oh, my goodness. For one, I did not put this on right. Well, hello. Welcome to my live. Let's try that again. Oh, guys, you, this is just, <laughs> I am really messing this up. It's just a card base. That's why I don't do this in lives. I just create front panels. Okay. I'll trim down the rest later. Let's move on. <laughs> and moving on. So let's add some foam tape to that. So let's do this one. I need to keep this closed. I know, everything is always crooked. I just always hope you guys don't notice or maybe I'll take the picture crooked so then you can't tell that anything is crooked. <laughs> All right, let me adjust that. So I am using 
some foam here to put on my circle. Normally I would add another circle behind this, uh, but I'm not going to right now. It's actually kind of killing me that I'm not cutting another circle, but I kind of want to get this done for you guys. I know some of you said you're on lunch hour. Super sticky. Super sticky. Oh, no, I'm stuck. There. Okay, that is there. I'll need that again, so I'll set that off on the side. Now, guys, can I put this on straight? Probably not. So hold your breath. Cross your fingers and your toes. See if I can do this. Get my circle there. Do I want to do that? Yeah, I'll center it about there. And then I have my little arch here and I have the sentiment there. I think I'll just go ahead and add this. No, it's going to kill me. I need to add foam to that. I just can't do it. I got to have foam. I got to have foam guys. But I'm only going to put it on the edge. There's just some things I can get away with not doing in my cards and I'm okay with it and others there are not. There are some things I just can't let it go. So let's add this. I'm putting this around the inner edge. So this is going to be the part that's actually on the circle. I want it. Yes, I wanted that lifted just a little bit there. I'm going to do that. Yes. I'm going to go ahead and add that. And get that popped up. And then, I mean, oh, I mean, this can go so many different ways. Okay. Getting distracted. Don't you hate that? You pick out a design for your card and you're like, wait, but I could do this or I could do this. Okay, this one, I cannot let this slide. I have to die cut out another sentiment. Let me find my paper. Okay, I feel better. Sentiments is one thing I just do not cut corners on because that's kind of like the I mean yes the, the arrangement is beautiful but the sentiment is really kind of the, the whole thing of the card so I don't want this to be sloppy I don't want this to be saggy so this I do not slack on my cardstock with my sentiments and I can kind of slide and wiggle that around now I <laughs> let it go. <laughs> what what did you guys want me to let go? I'm sorry, I was getting obsessive about my about my layers. <laughs> what are we letting go of? <laughs> Don't you hate when those songs get stuck in your head? Oh gosh. Okay, now I can add a little bit. And this is Taylor's poem, so it's not super thick. This just saves me from actually, I mean, I could cut another piece of cardstock too. So, but here I feel like I don't have to add as much foam tape because I already have cardstock layers. Don't ask what the method for my madness is. I don't know what it is. I know. I'm weird. I am weird. Isn't that crazy? The habits we get into with our card making and then it just feels wrong if we don't do it. Oh, I said that. <laughs> Sorry. Who knows what I say in a live? Okay, if I 
taking off all the backing. This is, you know, why my nails get trashed so fast. And then I can pop my head in the picture and pop this up there. Now I could slightly overlap it if I want, but I'm going to have it go on the other side and have it kind of hang off. Since my flowers are kind of slightly overlapped over there, I think this will be neat to have it slightly overlapped on that stitch. There is that. Ooh, so good. Now I have one last thing I want to add to it. And that is, I brought out, I picked these out of my drawer. I have clear drip drops, silver glitter, and gold glitter. What are we thinking? I want to add something. Should we do clear? Um... What should we do? I gotta find a little thing. Thank you, Susan. I'm a perfectionist. I am, unfortunately. I mean, not, there are some things I'm just like, you know, that's it. I'm done. Whatever. Um, good enough. That That's like my model. You know, Tom and Gina have a model. Mine is good enough. So now I just gotta decide, do we want... Gold, clear, silver. Clear. I'm getting a clear. Any other votes? Ooh, that went by really fast. Clear, clear, clear. Okay. We'll go with clear. I'm not looking again because then I'll change my mind. Ooh, these are big. Because there are a few things I wanted to show you before you guys pop away. So let's try and get this done. Oh, those are big ones. And now hopefully this won't be the longest part of the video. Where do we want to pop these? I'm just picking them up with my embellishment tool. Come on. You know these beads are like a turtle. Once they get on their back, it's just impossible to flip them over. There. And I'm just going to grab a handful out. Better than horrible, yes. I say that more times than I care to admit. Some of these are like super big. Uh, what stitch die was that? This was the diagonal diagonal stitched rectangle, which I believe I linked it down below in the video description too. Now, how do I want to arrange these? I think I did. Um, I think I I think I linked it. Mm. Oop, come back. This is another one. I need to just not dwell on it and just add them in, right? Just quit thinking about it. Because I can't. I want to leave one on there. Okay, I'm just going to stop. <laughs> you hate when it turtles too? I could sit and try and flip those over for a good five minutes. And then I can just pop down some glue. So this glue bottle uh, is the fine tip bottle that I have Gina Key Designs Connect Glue in. If anybody had asked that, I didn't look. And just randomly putting those clear ones on. I'm going to try and not overthink the embellishments. Because I know I will once the card is done, but I am not the embellishment queen. See if I can get these in without spilling. Yeah, yay. So those were the clear drip drops. I didn't link these because I didn't realize I was going to use them. So I will update my supply list when I'm done. So that is, oh, it's so clean. All that white space and that bright pop of color and our sentiment. Oh, so good, so good. I'm I gotta trim that edge, but I wasn't sure if that diagonal was gonna work there with my circle, but it really turned out. 
So here is the second one. I will finish this off screen. Uh, again, I will be popping it up with the foam tape. And these two sentiments came off the exact same sentiment set. This is the same stamp, die, and stencil set. So that is all linked below. Couple things if you guys are doing any shopping that I wanted to let you know about. They have, uh, if you place an order of $100 or more, they have a freebie that automatically gets added to your order. This is the Simple Stems. So these are beautiful that you can die cut out of like maybe black cardstock or matte gold, matte glitter, things like that. So this is the freebie for the month of April. We're in April, right? So that is the freebie for the month of April if you're ordering from Tailored Expressions. Another thing too that I have been loving this and it's so super cute is regardless of how much your order is, if you order from Tailored Expressions, they have these pretty postage collections. So in every order, there is something free. Um, regardless if it's $10 order or $100 order, you get something free. And so each month it changes and they're doing these little postage stamps. You guys, I'm obsessed with postage. So April, here is April. There is this um, postage card. I, I don't have any of this linked. I didn't, I didn't realize I was going to share it. I just seen it sitting here. So I will link this up afterwards. But this is free in an order if you place it during the month of April. And this board that it goes to... You can see how they start filling up on the back because they're a foam stamp. So um, I'll try and link this up afterwards. But this is just something really fun if you order from Tailored Expressions. I'm slightly obsessive, so I do have that collection going on there. But that is their uh, freebie that goes in any order. And this is the um, $100 gift with purchase. So if you guys are shopping... I was hoping my cardstock, my new cardstock would be here before my live was done, but it is not. So I'll have to just share that in a post or another card project. But these are the two cards. Well, I'll finish this one off screen. This is the card I completed today. Yay, you guys, I got something done. I just didn't sit and babble. I'm a little over an hour. Sorry about that, guys, but I appreciate you um, stopping by. Let me see if I can switch my camera really quick. Uh, button, front cam, there I am. I got my buttons right. Uh, let me just peek at your comments really quick here if there's anything I needed to, if you had any questions before I take off. You didn't, you've never seen the, the postage dies before? Those, it's so fun. And there's an additional die set you can get to create cards with them. It's, it's such a cute little incentive. You weren't aware of the postage board. Yeah, I think, God, I can't remember when that was. I'll have to look. I'm pretty sure you can purchase it. I'm pretty sure. Um, and then also you can just type in postage on their website and it would bring up, I think there's like an additional small postage die so you can create a card front with all of your uh, postage stamps you've collected so far. So it's a really cute thing. Yep, Heather, you love the mo monthly postage stamps. So good. Any questions before I take off or if there's something you want to see in a future live, you can always pop your suggestions here too. I love hearing what you guys say, um, even on replay, if you're watching replay, I love it when you read the comments or leave comments because I read all the comments tongue tied. Um, so I, I do go back and I read every single comment. I that is one thing I definitely do as just a way to keep in touch with everybody because I appreciate you all on YouTube. What cardstock did I order? I ordered the brand new colors from Tailored Expressions. So um, they have a new collection came out. I think it's like four or five colors. You can buy just the cardstock. You can buy the new ink pads or you can buy the I want it all bundle. And I'm, I'm an I want it all girl. So <laughs> it actually comes today. You're a Red Rubber fan. Yes, they provide amazing detail. You became familiar with me during my Pink Fresh class. Oh, thanks, Beth. It's great to see you here. Will the postage stamp be available for purchase? Um, I don't know. I'd have to look at the website. I don't know if I... 
Gosh, I want to say they are. I think you can purchase them after the month has gone. But don't quote me. I'd hate to be wrong and break your heart. I don't want to break your heart. Oh, I did answer it. <laughs> Do I give away my cards? I haven't. I don't come on consistently enough on my lives to really set anything in place. I hope to at some point. I, I have gone live more this year than I have probably in the last five. So I'm trying to get better at doing lives. Um, I guess it's something I'll have to to think about and work on if you guys are interested in in getting my cards. <laughs> Never thought of that. All right, guys. Uh, the stamps are available to purchase following month. Thank you, Heather. Thank you so much. I get them. I order every month, so I never pay attention. Perfect. You guys are fantastic. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to finish up here uh, with these two cards. Thank you all so much for joining me today. I hope by me scheduling it at least 24 hours ahead of time gave you guys some time to pop in. I'll try and be a little bit better at getting them more ahead of time and sending out my newsletter in a more um, timely basis, I guess I would say. And again, I'm trying to get more into the swing of things. I'll have to make some adjustments when it comes to the summer, but I love creating lives. I'm so glad you guys joined me today. Let me don't know down in the comments uh, if there's things you want to see in future lives. Do you want just a card showcase? Do you just want me to show you cards? Do you want me to create a card uh, technique? So I love to hear those things. I really do. I was just making sure there was no more uh, questions being asked. So if you're watching on replay, guys, thank you so much for watching the replay. If you're here live, thank you. I love you. I appreciate it. Again, after the live is done, I will update all of those links down in the video description, but there are some there to get you started of the main supplies that I used. So I will see you guys again, hopefully really soon. Thank you.